my angels. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to the top of the shard. I feel like you guys have been on a wild goose chase of London with me this morning and I finally got here and was like I've not even intro the vlog or spoken to you guys but we have had a day up in town today and I've just arrived at the shard, the Shangri-La, for a wonderful cocktail evening with Joe Loves. I have literally been dreaming about this evening for weeks and they are launching a very very exciting new scent which is black cashmere and tonka and you guys I know are going to love it. As you know I'm obsessed with the brand and this suite let me tell you is absolutely beautiful. So many of the girlies are here as well so it's like a big girly catch up and basically I feel like this vlog is going to kind of be like a few days with me. I don't know what we're doing. I feel like I'm here there and absolutely everywhere but as you know I always share it with you guys. Glamorous yet wholesome which is always I try and have a wonderful combination of both. We are also going to be speaking to Jo Malone herself. So Jo Malone CBE is the founder and MD of Jo Loves and so she is going to be talking to us this evening and launching this new sense which is so exciting and this suite is literally full of it. It smells absolutely exquisite. And I tried to dress a little bit like a Tonka bean. We've gone real chocolate vibes today with my beautiful Lalagi Beaumont bag, beautiful styled dress, Manolo heels. But of course I will try and give you guys a little bit more of a an outfit of the day. I feel like I'm a <laughs> We're finally here in London and it's going to be such a special evening. So let's go. So I know you've tried to know what some of the most interesting things you've ever found. I'm just letting you let me know that all the second hand spots are just so simple. Cocktail shaker. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It remi reminds me of the trip. That's what's nice. Oh, the paint brushes out. <laughs> no one is going to have any doubt at all who's behind that camera. <laughs> there is nothing more luxurious than having moisturizer paint brushed onto your arm and living your best life. <laughs> Wednesday evening, so um, uh, when I heard about hump day on a Wednesday, I have to say I thought it was to do with sex. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Until my, my son educated me as to, no mum, it's the middle of the week, and I went, oh okay. But Wednesday evening, standing up here, what a beautiful view. Look, we can see St Paul's, we can see the whole river, Tower of London, I mean it's pretty beautiful isn't it, up here on the 39th floor. So um, I'm going to be really brief, I'm just going to tell you the story. Um, first of all, thank you all for coming. It feels so special, because um, I don't live here anymore. I live in Dubai, and I only come back very often back into the UK, and, and I've been on a big uh, South uh, Asian tour uh, through China. Um, by the way, China, who's been to Shanghai in China? It's happening no. there. <laughs> <laughs> Gen Z, Gen Z, your generation, it's literally changing the world, and it is so exciting. So we arrive back Sunday, um, and then I'm, I'm off again, and then back to my beloved Dubai. Um, <clears throat> sometimes in life, when you're younger, you have, who had a gap year? Anyone? So I never had a gap year, and because I left school at 15 years old, and I was the sole breadwinner in our family from the age of 11. 
So I never had gap year because I never went to uni or college. I have no qualifications. I shouldn't even be standing in front of you. <laughs> By some luck, I am. And um, I look at my life and I think how lucky I have been um, because of my creativity. My creativity was all my masters, all my university, everything, that I had such faith in that ability to create that it changed my destiny. Um, Coming back and building a second brand, by the way, has been really hard. And one of the hardest things of the whole, I don't know whether any of you know this, but I am not allowed to use my name anymore. So you can call me anything you want. You can call me by my name, my birth name, but I cannot hold a bottle of fragrance and say I'm Jamaline. How weird is that? Yeah, that's mental. Crazy. And it's bizarre, and I believe morally wrong, but I can't do anything about it. So what do I do? Do I not create fragrance for the rest of my life and not use my own? Or do I recreate myself as, so you will only hear me refer to myself as Joan from now on. A bit like the artist Prince, formerly known as, I was formerly known as Joanne, and I will now be known just as Joan. But my love affair with fragrance and creating it is so huge, it's bigger than all of that. And my desire to succeed, my desire to build, my desire to inspire the next generation and change the world. I have been part of two unicorn businesses. My creativity, Journal in London, I'm allowed to say that, <laughs> and Zara. So I'm one of the creative uh, directors of fragrance for Zara. Two businesses that hit, have overhit a million dollars because of my creativity. And this brand that you see here now will do the same. It may take a lot of hard work, but we will take her to another third unicorn brand. And actually then, I'm probably done. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just carry on creating. But I love, I love to create. I'm dyslexic. Um, I probably got a bit, bit of dyspraxic in me as well. I'm, um, my brain thinks differently, and I have something called synesthesia. And every, th every fragrance I create, I'm telling you my story. So I'm telling you stories like music, like words, like food, anything. And I'm telling you the story of my life. So each one, from Pomelo and Matriarch, the first fragrance I created for Joe Loves that brought me back to life. And she has her genetic fingerprint on everything that we do. She says, no, don't let someone tell you you can't, you can. So this brand is all about actually facing Goliath and saying, I have three stones. Does anyone know that Old mm -hmm. Testament story, mm -hmm. David and Goliath? Yeah. Yeah. So David was this young warrior with three stones and Goliath was this huge warrior. And David swung his three stones and hit them each time. There's all kinds of uh, stories behind that. But no one is gonna tell, no, no Goliath is gonna tell me you can't create again. Because if I didn't create fragrance, I'd be one really unhappy woman. And Gary doesn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> so where does black cashmere and Antonka come into this? The reason that we're here, the reason that you had that most powerful cocktail. My God, that was strong, wasn't it? <laughs> um, about three years ago now, I had gone on, I was suffering severely from anxiety uh, because I couldn't find my creativity. I didn't know, you know, losing your name, you imagine, if your name you couldn't use for the rest of your life, and yet everybody knew you for your name. You imagine that scenario? And it took me to the brink of mental health and anxiety, and I really, really suffered. I went to Dubai, and I knew that actually I had to change something in myself. I couldn't change the situation. I couldn't make that go away. So I had to change the way I looked at it. Back to the UK, I love it, and I love all you guys, but I probably will never live here again. Middle East and in Dubai, I found my five senses. I know I can actually build and create all kinds of different things. So what is Black Cashmere and Antonka all about? It's about, about that desert night sky and the golden rivers of opportunity. If any of you would like to come to Dubai um, and you're coming through, please call me. Come and have a drink with me on the beach. Watch the suns rise and sunset. Come and sit down by the old creek with me sit under the trees and we'll smell together. The, the most wonderful sort of peaceful purpose of it. And then the golden rivers. 
golden rivers of opportunity. And you know what? When you get in a boat, can somebody go around and spray? Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, the golden rivers. I get into my boat. I don't know where the destination is, but I trust. I trust the creativity. So this fragrance is all about the beginning of my journey from Dubai. I don't know where it's going to go. I might head back to safe little citrus notes, or I might kind of push it in some other direction. But this is my declaration saying I love this part Thank of the world. Thank you so much. I love the Middle Eastern people. I love what they give to my life and added to it. And this is a celebration of that moment. Um, I still love London. I still love it. It's been my home for many, 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 many years. I now um, travel the world going around telling stories, painting people with fragrance. at the Joe Loves Abandon. When I say we, my favorite Ciao. little Yorkshire hood. And what, what's the drink party? It, it was amazing. The views. She's such an inspiration, isn't she? She is mesmerizing. When she, when she speaks her stories, you could literally hear a pin drop. Yeah, the whole room was silent. Yeah. You'd be able to hear it in your It was family. absolutely incredible. And she's just such an inspiration. And actually, I would highly recommend for you guys to buy her book because her story is just phenomenal from the fact that she obviously built Joe Malone London mm -hmm. was very very sick and so she yeah. actually sold it because she was not going she had nine months to live nice. and then she lost her scent and then obviously when you are in this line of business really your scent is yeah. everything and then she rebuilt Joe Loves and it's just phenomenal and I absolutely adore her I don't think Mon has ever seen me like oh my goodness I, I know Leonora as very forthcoming, confident, I, I, and you are, and I was like, and you are. like, well, she was in a conversation, so I've I didn't want to interrupt. Seen, I've never seen her nervous. Well, ever. I just didn't want to interrupt her, and I was like, oh, I just love her no, so you much. You were being very polite and waiting for a conversation. Love her. Well, Monica and I oh, are celebrating, celebrating our second anniversary. <laughs> we were on the very table, yeah. no husbands. Yeah. Last time we sat here, we got <laughs> absolutely legless on we spicy marks, yeah. and you got so legless, your husband. When I to collect you. He literally travelled to the shard. Um, and John, good old John, um, still reminds me to this day that we had to stop three times on the way home. Really? I really? was so unwell. <laughs> I'm not laughing at being unwell, I'm just laughing because it's changed. I was so. Yes, but, but I was so badly behaved. Is it a memory that we absolutely yeah. love? We're my one dog but we've had the most gorgeous evening and sadly my car is here so heading home for the evening but what a special day it's been I feel like it's like a pinch me moment when I get to come to events like this and also spend the evening with my best friends <sighs> what a gorgeous evening here at the Shangri-La Home, sweet home. It has gone just 11 p.m. and most certainly past my bedtime. I do sadly have about an hour. I haven't quite looked at the vlog, maybe over an hour's worth of proofing to do. 
just to ensure a vlog goes live tomorrow so you guys see it all from like the creation point of view but also the editing the editing <laughs> anyway i am going to see you guys in the morning um because i'm gonna go wash my face put my pjs on get into bed and just do the final edits to make sure that my vlog which will already be live so if you haven't seen my grantly hall vlog guys it's epic i've proofed and edited the first part of it but i need to do the second half tonight and then set it to upload because i live in the middle of nowhere with terrible wi-fi so everything has to go up the night before to ensure a 6 p.m live time oh the things you guys don't see but anyway it's been such a gorgeous day. Goodness gracious knows what I've captured. Um, but I feel like you guys love these vlogs. And then tomorrow, I'm conscious that I still need to answer quite a few of your questions that you asked me that we couldn't quite squeeze into the Aston Martin behind the scenes shoot. So maybe um, I'll answer a few of those tomorrow with you guys. So night night, sleep well, don't let the big bed bugs bite. And you'll be seeing me in just a second, but I'll be seeing you hopefully in a fair few hours and I mean that in the nicest way possible. Be well sweet dreams. See you in a minute. So it is the next day. What an evening we had. I was like fangirling Jo Malone. She is just a powerhouse and such an inspiration most certainly to me and just what she's built and built again is quite remarkable and she has such a life story that I just I couldn't recommend her book enough and her products Jo Loves is absolutely sublime the different scents and every scent has a story that is just so special and almost spine tingling in a way it was absolutely amazing and then this morning I have had a bit of a back to back morning to be honest with you. So I've actually come into like the main house and just thought I'm gonna get away from the madness that is out there, come with a gorgeous cup of tea. Well, that was a good start. My uh, battery died. So as I was saying, I've come in here with a hot cup of chai tea with a dash of oat milk and I promised you guys that I would answer the rest of your questions because I think we only managed to get um, like four or five of them into our Luxury by Leonora behind the scenes shoot which I just can't thank you guys enough. Your comments on that vlog have absolutely blown me away. It was such a special shoot and I really did, I, you know, I took a moment to step back and be like, wow, you know, two years ago, I never thought I would be in this position and working with the brands that I'm working with. And it really is down to you guys and the fact that you are really enjoying watching it. So I can't thank you enough. And it was just so special. And all of your comments were, were so kind and it just, really takes my breath away when I read your comments and just the amount of time you take to tell me your stories and just how much love and kindness goes into your heartfelt comments actually blows my mind and I am so utterly grateful. So I've come in here and we're gonna get cozy. Oh, absolutely divine. These are the sofas that just like, you can really like snug into. So I have got some questions on my phone here. Bear with me a second, I need to find them. Okay, I've read all the questions. And we're gonna start off with, there's so many questions about talking about who or what inspires me. So I feel like I kind of need to start off with that one first. What inspires me? I don't know, I feel like I have this, in some ways, uncontrollable burning inside of me that wants to create something that is so powerful and inspirational and in some ways a family in a way that I I just 
I'm not going to stop until I have created it. And there's so many different elements in terms of what inspires me. You know, I always say that, you know, my father is a huge inspiration to me in terms of where he's, you know, what he's built in his lifetime. And, you know, I feel so privileged and I've had literally the most idyllic and dream childhood that I wanted to be able to provide that and more for my own children to make sure that the next generation are going to be as well set up as as I was so there's there's always that from like a personal element but in terms of like a business point of view I think I have like the perfect combination and my mother always has a lovely way of saying things she says you have a sprinkle of your mother and you have a sprinkle of your father and it depends upon how many sprinkles you have and I feel very lucky in a way that I feel like I've really um I have my father's sort of like entrepreneurship and um, drive embedded in my bones that I will work all hours of all days and trust me sometimes that's not a good thing um, but what inspires me I feel you know sometimes I go off on a tangent and I don't actually come back and answer the question I think taking small little elements of everything in life you can take a walk around and and look at the beautiful leaves on the trees and I'm literally looking at them now and they're this beautiful golden red burgundy tone. You can take inspiration from that. It really depends upon what you do. You might have a person that inspires you and it's okay to have a few different people that inspire you, whether that's maybe like a fashion icon or a parent or maybe like a mentor. There are so many different things that inspire me but I feel like I am so, <laughs> that is the grandfather clock, I am so hungry to build what it is that I want to build and I am not going to stop until we achieve it. Um, so I think, again, back to the question, what inspires me is to create something that is so powerful and something that makes every single one of you smile. So hopefully that answers that. And then I think that actually leads on to a question that I read a little bit further down. Yeah, what is your biggest goal? What are you working towards that keeps you moving? I think that is such a great question because they've said big goal, working towards and keep moving i think literally in that in that question alone is almost like a strategy in order to achieve your dreams and like i said i have huge goals and i feel like this is just the beginning of it and we're creating this exceptional community on here that is just so inspiring in a way you guys inspire me every single day with your support and kindness and that's definitely something that at the very beginning that's what i wanted to achieve on here is to create uh, a community that was a safe place that you know maybe there are a few of you out there that well i know there are are a lot of you out there that are going through such a difficult time and to use my YouTube channel as an escapism but also there's such a huge percentage of you guys that you know what we share the same passion and love for luxury and just the fact that I get to combine my love for luxury and create content and share it with you is literally like a dream come true and it kind of goes back to the Luxury by Lena or a shoot that we just did. It really was a pinch me moment to stand there and think, right, okay, today I'm literally combining my two favorite things that I believe I was put on this earth to do, which is obviously my passion in life is my horses, and then also being able to create luxury content with my dream car. And yeah, it was it was just absolutely exceptional. So how what are my what are, what are my goals i mean i don't want to tell you guys what they are because i feel like that can be quite a personal thing but what i can tell you is that this is just the beginning i'm talking you know building a, a huge brand uh, potentially bringing out products so i feel like this might be the first time i've said that so it's very much still in 
um, research, product development, and sort of, yeah, strategy stage. So very much pipeline, but ultimately to bring out my own product and to build just the most incredible brand um, that's also, in a way, you know, going to be accepted in the future, if that makes sense, and also 1000% me. So ultimately, that's the goal. How am I going to keep moving in order to achieve it? I suppose you need to create a strategy. First and foremost, you need to figure out what it is that you want to do. And so I've, I've figured that out. And now it just comes down to research, um, thinking about where these products are gonna be made, how we're gonna make them, obviously websites, um, building all of the things behind the scenes that you need, you know, the foundations that are going to be the platform that we need in order to make it a huge success. And I know I have you guys and the support from you, again, blows my mind every single day. So having the goal, understanding what it is, how you're gonna get there, and then work your absolute socks off in order to do it. Like I am the first person to tell you that opportunities don't come to you. You go out there and you grab them. Manifest, knock doors down, email a hundred times, do everything you possibly can. If something is your dream and someone says no, you gotta keep going until they say yes. You've got to prove to them why you are the best person or why they should give you that job or why, 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 why. Your answer's gotta be so good and don't give up would be my advice on that. And again, there are so many questions here about, um, you know, what does, what have I learned from content creation? Can I give people any advice as to how to get into my line of business? So, I feel like I, I've i learned so much from the content creation world. And I think the most important thing is to find something that you are extremely passionate about. You know, this in some ways becomes, you know, it's my life. You guys are such a huge part of my life that if I was doing something that I didn't like, oh my goodness gracious me, or if it was something that like wasn't me, if I was, if I was sort of in a way, you know, I do think there are content creators out there that like put on a voice or put on their camera or sort of action, go. I personally think that would become exhausting. You have got to be 1000% you to ensure that you're in it for the long haul. So find something that you are obsessed with, that you're passionate about and that you have this like, undefining burning feeling in your tummy that you just want to scream to the rooftops about and first you've got passion if you've got passion and hard work you can make anything happen and then basically that goes back to creating a goal creating a strategy and then working your absolute arse off in order to make it happen going and speaking to other people that have done it um getting their advice i definitely think that there are there are so many pros and they most certainly outweigh the cons and the cons which was a uh, you know a question was that i also am quite aware that john with this pressure washer is uh getting rather close okay john is not very happy with me um that <laughs> blowing noise or pressure washing noise that he is doing out there is not the one. Sorry for the interruption again. But the cons, um, okay. Well, you guys know 100% I'm real with you guys. I think one thing that I struggle with and kind of will always struggle with because essentially I love my job is getting a, a healthy work-life balance. Um, it is non-stop. This world doesn't, it's not a nine till five, it's not even like a 6 a.m. till. You guys comment, message, voice message, the ideas, the concept, brands, contracts, it literally doesn't stop. So unless you are really, really good at setting boundaries of like when you start work, when you finish work, um, then I can say that it does become a little bit much sometimes. And like, I'm very open with you guys. Like I've experienced burnout 
twice. Um, once at the beginning of last year, where I actually ended up in hospital, which wasn't which wasn't great. And then um, at the beginning of this year, I basically stopped before it got that bad. So I would say the cons are that, um, yeah, that there there's not much of a work life balance. Um, and then the other con. Um, I mean, it's probably very obvious. There are some not very nice people out there. Probably those people are certainly watching this as well. Um, and it's the people that think they know absolutely everything about you. And like, I'm sure, you know, there are some wonderful websites out there and I don't read them. I don't care. They don't know about me. They don't know the inner measurements of my thigh, let's just say. And if you do read it, because I think at the very beginning, um, I had no idea about, you know, I feel very privileged that I don't get very much hate at all on my Instagram. And my comments, my comments area is the most positive, the most beautiful space to be. I feel so lucky and so grateful to you guys. However, I am aware that there is another wonderful place on the internet that is not, that is basically dedicated to the most shocking people out there. I've got to be honest, and I'm sure you're watching this. I just don't get it. I cannot understand, I actually feel really sorry for them. At the very beginning of starting my YouTube channel, I kind of was made aware of it and read a few bits and pieces and it got me to a point where I was like, this is actually ridiculous, like it's borderline laughable. Um, and I just feel really sorry for those people. So if you are, I'm gonna be honest, if you are thinking of starting a YouTube channel or becoming like a public figure um, or a content creator, influencer, whatever you would like to wish to call it, that is gonna happen. No matter how hard you try for it not to, that is going to happen. And they're gonna think that they know absolutely everything. I mean, I've had people walk down my driveway pretending they're delivery drivers. I mean, Anyway, it's probably best that I don't start off on that tangent. Um, however, they're just very, very sad individuals. But I, you know, gotta be honest and make you guys aware of it. So that would definitely be one of the cons. But like me, I just giggle. Smile and wave, smile and wave. If they're talking about you, you've gotta be doing something right. That's what I think. So, gosh, I feel so naughty talking about it. But I feel like it's this big subject that no one speaks about. And it's so unbelievably wrong. There's got to be, I don't know, something, you know, a little chink that if you want to go out of your way in a day to upset somebody or say something horrible about somebody, you've got to be a really, really sad and upset individual. And genuinely, I'd love to actually wrap my arms around them to sort of, you know, try and make their day better in a way. Um, anyway, we shall move on from that subject. Um, how did you know Mark was the love of your life? Oh, well, what a question. I don't think, I mean, I definitely, this term, love at first sight, it happens to some of us. He definitely whisked me off my feet. And I feel like in a way, like I've grown up, obviously he is a little bit older than I am. And I feel like we've like, in a way, like I've grown up with him and he most certainly makes me a better person. I am quite a little bit of a scatty brain. I mean, even down to answer these questions, I feel like I'm going off on so many different tangents. But anyway, back to the point, Leonora. How did I know he was the love of my life? I mean, he most certainly is the love of my life. I feel like when you're looking for the one and maybe you're with him and you're questioning you know is this going to be my life partner it's not somebody that you can live with it's simply got to be somebody that you cannot live without and we have you know what people that like really know us our close friends you know sometimes we fight like cat and dog we bicker like an old married couple but you know we've been together for almost 10 years but at the end of the day he is just my person he is 1000 percent for me he would literally fight any battle he you know, he he does he makes me a better person in a way from every single angle. Whether it is you know 
folding all my laundry up and putting it away or whether you know he just he just makes me a better person and so we also laugh I actually think this is kind of going into a different subject but when you are looking for the love of your life look for kindness it's the most important thing kindness happiness you're gonna grow old looks are going to fade and when you are 80 90 if we're all very lucky it's got to be somebody that can make you laugh and make you smile so um i would i would say that how did i know he was the one you know we've also been through so many different journeys together and um when we first met we were on this wild passionate love affair it was no not affair but you get my point journey and we literally traveled the south of france for six weeks together and then or eight weeks together and then we moved to belgium together so kind of we just we made it work and i very very quickly i mean he actually did say he loved me first <laughs> and it was like one of the best days of my life and just I still get butterflies um, drives me absolutely crazy and I think it's really important to also say that Instagram is a highlight reel and I think it's really really important for maybe those of you out there who are worried about you know getting married and having babies and I think I said this in my last vlog on the shoot I said it doesn't matter about anybody else's timeline someone up there has their own plan for you and that is not your plan whether you believe in what is up there or not you're on your journey and you write it you literally write the words in the book so take control and you don't need to compare yourself if everybody else is getting married or engaged and having babies that's not what you want at that point don't worry about it and so you know i was so young when we got engaged i was so young when we got married i was definitely the first out of my whole friendship group and one of my best friends oh i'm actually gonna cry one of my best friends called me this morning to actually say she's pregnant <laughs> um which is just wild and so beautiful and I'm so happy for her but then again like I don't feel panicked to think like that's not my journey so if you're currently in the position where you're single and worried about everybody else moving on with their lives and you feel like you're hate the term left on the shelf that is simply not true there's just someone extremely special literally just around the corner and the moment you stop looking for it it will happen trust me and how did i know he was the one i suppose you never know you never know and you also never know what can happen in life and back to my point about instagram everybody's relationships on instagram look like oh the most dreamy wonderful thing in the world and i probably portray that on my social media channel i feel like instagram everybody's gonna be like oh they have the dream marriage on youtube you guys know the truth he drives me up the wall his ocd is a nightmare we bicker like cat and dog but i love him more than anything in the entire world and i simply could not live without him so um i do also think distance makes the heart grow fonder he travels a lot to mallorca um, um, which you know it, it makes me miss him and we can't wait to see each other when he comes back which is really really lovely but don't get me wrong gosh I'm wobbling on now we've also gone through periods in our relationship where I genuinely thought like I, that you know I, I did think it was like possibly the end and that not anything in terms of like infidelity and please no one go off on that tangent you know, when I had my accident, I was in such a dark place and I, I, I was so low and very anxious and very upset and didn't know what I wanted to do with my world and kind of like striking out on the closest people around me. Um, and then I learned that my life is not going to change unless number one it changes it herself. And he's just always been there, always stood me. I always say back in our show jumping days, he is the wind beneath my wings. I would never have won what I won. I wouldn't be here today and doing what I do for a career 
I mean, even just going to Grantly Hall, he even said to me, he was like, I had no idea what goes into like creating content. And, you know, ultimately um, we had just the most exquisite, beautiful, luxury, phenomenal time. But the time it takes to create all that content is quite obscene. And the fact that he was just so supportive and saying, right, I have no idea how to use this fancy camera, but we'll give it a whirl. And he's like strapped the lighting to his head so that he can use two hands to hold the gimbal. He was making me giggle. But um, yeah, I think in a very, very long way, I hope I've answered that question. Honestly, the rain is coming down. If I actually zip it for a second, amazing. I feel like, do you know what, we should be lighting the fire. Right, next question. Organisation tips. BTS of how you organise your day. Organisation tips. I feel like my personal life organisation recently, in the last couple of weeks, has gone out of the window. I mean, <laughs> like the organisation, it's been, I have everything is everywhere, clothes are everywhere, my suitcase still hasn't been unpacked, um, and I am a very organised individual. Work-wise, um, I am very organised, everything has folders, and there's actually another question here in terms of like, how do I organise, yeah, how do you organise your day? Um, time blocks is so important. I think if you write down at the beginning of the day everything that it is that you need to achieve and try and write time slots in, you know, how long is that certain task going to take you? So you need to actually put time next to each one of those. Definitely build in a bit of a buffer because as you know, your girly likes to go overboard. So make sure you write down all of your tasks. Make sure that you know how long each task is going to take you and then build in a bit of a buffer because some things take longer than others and you know some things come up that are slightly urgent than others so that is how I personally plan my day I do also need to give Anna and Ellen a massive shout out without them I wouldn't be able to you know achieve everything in my day and you know I, I definitely don't think it's um <laughs> Uh, any news to anyone that my days are currently really quite long but you don't build what it is that I am trying to build um, and most certainly a brand like Jo Malone herself has built with Jo Malone London and Jo Loves by quite literally sitting on the sofa drinking a cup of tea it doesn't work like that you know it is quite lonely sometimes really long hours and you don't go out with your mates um my husband gets really rather ticked off at me because he'd like me to go out with our friends but i have such a passion to build something extraordinary and the reason that i'm able to do it is because of you guys and like you are my biggest cheerleaders and I will always say it and always be so grateful that I have you guys. We're like this big family and yeah, we're having some conversations I just never thought would even be possible. It's just, it's just incredible. Then I'm going to have to kind of, uh, <laughs> time slots everybody, <laughs> organizations of the day. I've been wobbling on for probably about half an hour. But, um, right, what three things that make you feel good about yourself? That's interesting. I never really think about that sort of thing. What do I love about myself? <laughs> what an odd, I feel very strange even answering this. Um, I hope my ability to make people smile that's one of my favourite things about myself. I know that's such a weird thing to say. Oh God, I don't know why I'm getting emotional again. This is so bizarre, I keep thinking about my friend and it made me so happy this morning. Um, you know, you can change somebody's day by just giving them a compliment. You know, if you commute in the morning and you're on a tube and there's somebody next to you and you really like their shoes or their bag or their face, their smile, go out of your day to 
go and say hi or just say I'm so sorry to interrupt your day but I think you're really beautiful like last night I noticed a girl across the room and her name is hopefully she doesn't mind me mentioning but her name is Safi and she's the most beautiful woman inside and out and she's just had a baby and she's sort of like um, navigating her life and sharing her story and her journey about being a new mother and postpartum and, and fashion and beauty and events and she's just the most incredible influencer and I follow her and of course I will leave her details down below and I noticed her but we just didn't get a chance to talk and I went to go and get my coat as I was leaving and I was like actually no Lena a stop so I turned around and she was having a conversation with somebody and I just obviously had to very politely excuse myself and just say I follow you, I adore you, you're incredible, keep going, you're amazing, I love your content and I think yeah that's one thing I I, I, so odd to say I like about myself, um, something else, I love giving and I think um, I get such a kick out of giving, I love giving presents, um, I love giving um, my time in a way um, and yeah I think that's really important and then something else, what do I love about myself? I do love this. I think other people might think that it might be my downfall, but I love working and I have such a drive and like power inside of me that um, I will literally like, I almost think of myself as like a bit of a, a ninja. <laughs> Like, what am I doing? It's like one of those video games. It's like, what life throws at you? I think I'm exceptionally good at dodging. Not dodging, but like finding solutions. I am the biggest solution finder. Somebody gives me a problem and I'm like, no problem. We can fix that. We can make it happen. We can do this. We can do that. Finding another solution. If somebody closes a door, I will find, I will go and hire a bulldozer to knock the bloody house down. So that's something that I think is definitely, um, one of my one of my pros but trust me there are a few cons we're not going to get into that um and maybe do you know what there's so many other questions here if you could have lived in another time in the past what era would it be probably the 60s or 70s they were so glamorous and i definitely think i have a huge sprinkle of my grandmother in me and i'm looking at like pictures of my grandmother like around the drawing room and my mother and i just think they were so glamorous even the way that they came down for breakfast and what they wore and the and the decor it was just so opulent and i know some of you think that i'm too much but this is me and i hope there are uh, more people out there that love me than hate me. I hope, I truly hope. So that would be, yeah, uh, 60s or 70s, I would say. Um, do you think you'll live abroad again? If so, where? I personally think you can never say never. And and Jo last night talking about the fact that she's just moved to Dubai, it was never in her, in her plan, but she adores it and that's where she calls home. Do you know, I get questions every single day asking me whether I would consider moving to Mallorca. I can't see it happening in my near future, but I will never say never. You never know. You never know. So I don't know about that one. And the final one, I think so many people have asked me this, my biggest fashion inspiration. I have a few. Obviously, Grace Kelly is like at the top of my mood board Pinterest. Had to stop again. One, I run out of space on the SD card and the husband called me to say, what size are my boxer shorts? <laughs> Um, all of these questions, sorry. So my biggest fashion inspiration, I have really rather a few. Um, Grace Kelly at the very, very top of my um, mood board Pinterest. Audrey Hepburn, timeless, classic, ladylike, quite cu cutesy in a way, demure, all of that shebang. Uh, Princess Diana, I just her fashion, so elegant timeless, just exquisite. Um, Grace Kelly, Marilyn Monroe, Di Princess Diana. <laughs> just goes to show how long I've been sat here. I think my final one would be, oh gosh, Jackie Kennedy and Elizabeth Taylor. 
just fashion icons. And hopefully I inspire you with your fashion too. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Goodness gracious knows how long I have been warbling on for, but I think it's been a really long time since we've just done like a sit down, heart to heart, pour everything out and yeah, I, I love you guys. I can't, I feel like I can't, I don't have the words to express it any more than I do and just to share my gratitude with you. And if ever there's anything else that you would love to know, and I always say like, if ever there's any of you that is struggling out there, my DMs on Instagram, my direct messages, it's a private place, please send me a note. Um, and I'm literally always there for you because when I'm feeling low, and I think it's really important to say, I know I come across as like the most positive person on earth, and I am, I, you know, I take the beautiful little moments out of everything, even down to sipping on my gorgeous cup of tea. But sometimes, you know, you get into a dark place that you, you, feel you can't get out of, and I, I really understand that, and I have been in that place. And when I do wake up on certain days and feel a little bit low and have all the no's that you could possibly imagine, I read your comments and I know you guys are always there for me and I just wanna say that I'm always here for you. So please, please reach out to me um, on Instagram, direct messages. It's like I said, it's a private place and um, we can chat and fingers crossed I can make you smile and hopefully make you feel better. Um, and literally as this rain has stopped, what is that amazing quote? This, t this storm shall pass. I don't think that's it, but anyway. <laughs> We're getting very deep, but the point and the moral of that quote is that no matter what storm you might be going through at the moment, um, it will pass and there is light at the end of the tunnel and it will get better and gosh this is getting really deep anyway i love you all a happy whatever day whatever time of day it is and most importantly sending you so much love 